Hi, I'm Natalie Bouchard, and you're listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Thank you for tuning in to the second episode of Inside NC Labor. Today, we have a very special guest with us. We have our very own labor commissioner, but I'm not going to tell you her name because (laughs) one of the things that happens in the communications office is we get a lot of questions about how to pronounce your name. So I thought since you are here and you are our guest today, (laughs) Commissioner Barry, you could elaborate on that. Fine. Thank you, Dolores. Well, hey, y'all. So glad to be here with you today. Uh, Dolores mentioned that we get questions about pronunciation of my name, and yes, we do. Uh, My name is pronounced Cherie, and it's spelled C-H-E-R-I-E. And uh, there's kind of an interesting story about it. Uh, My dad named me when I was born, and he named me Cherie because for 13 months during World War II, he was a prisoner of war in a German prisoner of war camp. And so when he was liberated by the Brits, he came home through France. And while in France, he heard Mon Chéri and learned what it meant. So he said, I promised myself that if I got home alive and ever had a daughter, my first daughter would be named Cherie. So later in life, uh, I asked my dad, you know, what does it mean? Because I didn't know. And he said it means darling, dearest, or expensive. And he said, so you know which one you are, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) And he meant expensive. (laughs) So that's how I got the name. And uh, a lot of people call me Cherry or Sherry. And That's fine, and uh, then I married uh, my husband Norman, and his last name's Barry, so now it's kind of become Cherry Berry, which I love that, and it kind of sounds like a Baskin Robbins flavor of the month, but (laughs) that's great. (laughs) It's easier for little kids, you know, to say Cherry Berry, and it kind of appeals to them, so you can call me anything but late for dinner. But it is interesting to hear about people's names. It and, is. And I know when you were a little girl, your father had a special <laughs> nickname for he you. He did. He did. Do you mind sharing that? My dad called me Flossie. You know, and I'm going, wait a I minute. That. That's like a farm animal. That's <laughs> like a, you know, a cow's nickname's Flossie. But my family did have nicknames for each other and I was Flossie. The greatest advice he ever gave me was when he told me that uh, whenever I had an idea about something I wanted to do or some new thing I wanted to try or some new lifestyle change I wanted to make, whatever it was, he would listen in great detail as I told him about my idea. And then he would get a smile on his face and he would look at me and he would use a word that I can't use in public, but it basically meant the same thing. He would look at me and he would say, don't mess it up, Flossie. So I tried all my life not to mess up anything (laughs) because of my time. You've done a good job. (laughs) Right. And speaking of a good job, since we just are getting ready to issue a news release, Commissioner Barry, about the injury and illness rate, why don't you speak to that? Oh, the, I'd be The injury happy and to. illness rate has dropped to an, a historic low in North Carolina. You know, I've been fascinated by the downward trend of that rate ever since I took office. When I first took office, it was 4.8 per 100 full time employees, and now it stands years later at 2.3 and if you look at a graph of the numbers over the years as we have tracked them and recorded them it's uh, it's been on a downward trend now there were one or two years where it plateaued and stayed the same but it didn't go up so every year that number has been going down and that's a very important number because that basically is what we use to judge the state of the occupational safety and health 
of the workers in our state. But to have that continually go down, the things we're doing, we've tried to create an atmosphere with a regulatory agency, the Department of Labor, where people will actually call us on the phone and ask for our help. I know that years ago, when I first took office, there was a reluctance to have anything to do with a regulatory agency, but we've worked, everyone has worked very hard over the years to make that change. And now I'm really encouraged and happy with the number of companies that participate with us in all of our voluntary programs, like our safety award banquets. That's grown and grown and grown over the years. A company volunteers to be a part of that and to have a regulatory agency where they will actually say, hey, we want to be part of that with you. Same with the Carolina Star program. Our SHARP program is growing like leaps and bounds. That again is voluntary. So that's what we have tried to do to change the way people look at the Department of Labor as a regulatory agency, but also realize the great value that exists from having us be hand in hand with them working towards their goals of a safe and healthy workforce. So I'm very, very proud of this number and its decline over these years, but I give full credit to the employers and employees across the state who have embraced not only safety and health, but have created that culture within their facilities or on their job sites where they have realized that there is no widget we make in North Carolina, there is no project Project we build in North Carolina. There is no service we provide in North Carolina that's more important than the lives and limbs of the people doing the work. So a big shout out and thank you to everyone across the state of North Carolina who's working today or tonight and who owns businesses and is striving to have good programs in place for these wonderful numbers. Thank you all. And the reason we look at the rate is because it takes into account economic growth, as Todd McNulty was explaining Correct. to us. And when you think about the growth North Carolina has experienced over the past decade, I mean, think about it. And this rate continues to just decline. It's remarkable. But I just thought, I mean, that's, I think it's very important that that economic growth, and it accounts for that unlike the fatality rate. That's why we always point to the injury and illness rate, right. and we say it's the best barometer. And it is. And it is. And we are well below the national average for the injury and illness rate. I'm very, very proud of that, and we are statistically significantly below the national average, and that's a wonderful place for North Carolina to be. Well, we have you here, Commissioner. I'm going to ask you one more question. All righty. What made you decide to run for Labor Commissioner? How many years ago now? <laughs> In 2000 oh. was your first race. Yes, 2000 was the first uh, election that I had, and I would say 1999 is when I decided to do it. I was in the North Carolina House at the time, House of Representatives, and I had been in there for eight years. I had promised when I first ran for the House that I'd serve eight years and move on, so it was time for me to move on. And I had a uh, manufacturing background. My husband and I had started a successful company up in Catawba County, which is still there to this day. We'd started it in 1985. I had that background, starting a company, growing it, having it become successful. I had the legislative experience from actually writing and making the laws that we have to live under every day. So. Looking at all that experience and talking to friends of mine, a couple of them said, you know, the perfect fit for you is Commissioner of Labor. As it turned out, that's what it's been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have enjoyed now being elected to five terms as Commissioner of Labor. I wish, you know, I could tell you why. I don't know. I enjoy what I do. I love every minute of it because the people in North Carolina are just so terrific and wonderful to be around. And I have the best staff in the world. I uh, wouldn't even want to do this job without them. So everybody else out there, you know, in state government, I've got the best. Um, <laughs> don't try to steal them <laughs> because I wouldn't want to do this job without them. It's just, it's wonderful. I enjoy it immensely, but that's why that's I got awesome. into it. As of September of 2019, you will have the record for longest running labor commissioner in office. 
Who else yeah. surpassed? Frank Crane. Does that okay. make me the oldest? Um, no, <laughs> Not at all. no. So his term was 18, 18 years and seven months because he took over for a commissioner that died. And then as of September of 2019, it will have been 18 years and eight months. And then she'll be the longest serving labor commissioner in yeah. the history of the state yes. and beyond. Amazing. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. Yes. Okay, well, that wraps up this edition of Inside NC Labor. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us again on future episodes. Bye, y'all. <laughs>